Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Line. Please, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. The streak is in its infancy still? Is 14 still an infant? I don't know anything about your human life. I mean, our human lives. Beep boop. Beep boop. YGE6 Zay E. Zay? Z E D S. Zeds. This is not great. Pony plus lipstick. Our speed is ridiculous. You thought I was gonna say redonkulous, didn't you? No, I don't ascribe to those uh, new human slang words. I mean, our new human slang. Beep, boop, beep. Anyway, um, hopefully we don't pick up little Chad next. Clearly, that has fallen by the wayside. Um, this is a, a really, really interesting but also fragile start. We're like a fledgling, you know, penguin right now. We need to be cradled between the feet of our, uh, of those who sired us. In order to make sure we don't freeze to death in the cold arctic winter here. Actually, penguins only exist in Antarctica, Northern Lion. I know because my dad is a penguinologist and we fly down to Camp McMurray every year. I can't remember what the actual base is called. I knew it at one point because I watched the thing. Fort McMurdo? Fort McMurdo? Is that correct? Something like that. Yo, John Carpenter's The Thing is dope, by the way. If you have not seen it. It's like a Werner Herzog documentary, but fiction and about, you know, like an alien. I'm not, like, breaking any new ground by saying John Carpenter's The Thing is dope. I just hope that you've seen The Thing, and if you've not seen The Thing, you should see The Thing. In fact, if you're unfamiliar with the work of John Carpenter on a large scale, there's a lot of stuff that you should watch. Oh my god, that was close. John Carpenter's 1985 film, They Live, starring Rowdy Roddy Piper and Keith David, is fantastic and uh, a touchstone of, uh, of cult cinema that gets referenced all the time in things that you might not have even known about. I'm not trying to be snobby about it in the least. That is a lot of HP. I'm just saying, uh, you know, you should, you should watch it. It's good. It influenced a lot of people, especially with the death of Roddy Piper this year, very sadly. Oh, you think it's books? It is books. Probably we're better off with Satanic Bible, huh? Um, you know, there's never been a better time to watch it except for when it came out, but many of you were probably not even alive. I know I wasn't. The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China. Like, there was a Starman. There was a run in the 80s where John Carpenter just, like, could not be stopped. He was pumping out hit after hit. And then, at some point, he made Ghosts of Mars in, like, 2002. And, you know, it, I'm not saying that ruined his career by any stretch of the imagination, but... Certainly left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. I gotta admit, Ghost of Mars was actually pretty horrible. Um, but you can't take uh, you can't take someone's work away from them because the last thing that they did sort of sucked. You have to you have to take the good with the bad, you know. Doesn't mean you have to like it or you know buy the box set or something like that, but you gotta you gotta understand. For every space food trugman, <laughs> face space food trugman. Space food truck segment on the NLSS. You know, there's always the chance to get a, a new Dark Souls out of it or something like that. Um, how does this run look? Yo, we desperately need this deal with the devil. This streak is pretty much in no danger of dying as long as we can get some damage early on. Because our HP is just ridiculous. Um, especially considering we started with two and took a little damage. Or maybe we started with three but took a little bit of damage. Um, and now that we have Satanic Bible, we're probably like completely safe to keep that going. But uh, I do worry that if we don't get uh, some kind of increased damage soon, we're going to have big problems. In fact, I'm so worried about damage, I almost stuck with the pony. Not out of habit and, uh, you know, momentum and keeping the ability to fly, but rather because I was like, once every four rooms we can charge and kill some enemies, but... That's probably not a good reason to keep it going. The good news is, you know, on the first couple of floors... Ah, that was not the best dodge there. On the first couple of floors, who gives a shit? Like, if you can't beat, um... If you can't beat Little Horn or something with 10 HP, then you got bigger problems, I think, in the Binding of Isaac in general. You gotta practice, man. It's not about the items at that point. Um, but, you know, coming up, we're gonna be encountering enemies who are pretty annoying. So, if you could just grant me a little bit of damage, I would... I would love to take them on. Pushpin is okay, I suppose, as far as uh, trinkets go. The occasional... Oh my god, I'm dodging right into these like least opportune shots here. Um, if you can uh, give me the occasional piercing shot, I'll be happy. Prefer maybe just like one tiers upgrade, though. So we'll take Satanic Bible. We haven't been to our item room yet. We've got to be pretty much at the end of the floor regardless, though. Like, I'm imagining that... 
we don't have too much uh, time left. Too many dead ends that we uh, need to go down in order to find that uh, item room. And even if we do, we got to find it anyway. I mean, we've got the keys for it, so we can't really make any excuses one way or the other. Now... Monstro is... I'd say he's, like, maybe in the top third of most annoying bosses to face on the first floor. Maybe not. I mean, how many bosses can you even face on the first floor? I'm not gonna just sit here and rattle off, like, the 10 or 15 that I can remember right now at the top of my head while fighting him. But at the same time, he's a little tanky. He's a little annoying. The shots, they have a difficult... Yep, yeah, as you can see right there, they have a difficult perspective to tell where they're gonna land. I'd much rather have, like, a pin or something like that, but that's okay. We get Synth Oil, and along with Synth Oil, we get Dark Matter, and along with Dark Matter, we get Judas's Shadow, and I'm gonna just take Judas's Shadow, and I'm gonna end my own life right now, because I really want to pick up that damage, and admittedly, this is gonna leave us with only two Black Hearts, but I still think this is the right decision so that we can start stacking up, um... Satanic Bible plays immediately. And considering we just got Dark Matter, Synth Oil, and Dark Judas, I'd say that my requests for uh, extra damage have pretty much firmly been granted here. This is like plus one, plus one, and then doubled, I think? Is that... What is, what is Synth Oil? I know that uh, Dark Matter is plus one, which is really good. But I don't know what, uh, what Synth Oil is. I just know the sound it makes when it takes a man's life. Okay, that was our library. So this must be our item room right up here. Or soon enough up here. Should have saved some bombs. I used them for combat. Um, now that seems silly because I'm like, why would I need bombs for combat? We're kicking the shit out of things. God's flesh is just okay, but, uh, but that's fine. Oh, punch my microphone there. Microphone check one, two, what is this? The rough-necked assassin? No, the five-foot assassin with the rough neck business. That's what he says. Float like gravity, never had a cavity. Got more something than a something had family. One day I'll, I'll remember all the lyrics to Buggin', but it's not gonna be today. We Got the Jazz is probably coming up first. Let's head down. We're two rooms away from feeling pretty good about our HP. I mean, even as of right now, I feel okay about it. And our damage, like, we basically flipped our concerns. I had enough HP, uh, and I was a little worried about our damage. Now we have enough damage, and I'm a little bit, oh my god, a little bit worried about our HP, but... Uh, first off, Head of the Keeper, good item. Then, Cricket's Head, great item. We're almost one-shotting, which is a nice way of saying we're two-shotting, but we're almost one-shotting those, uh, Dark Silkworms, which is actually amazing because they have way more HP than their, uh, their counterparts, the, uh, the ones that were in vanilla. Ah, I should have waited another room to pick that up. We kind of wasted our, uh our charge there, but I will say that was definitely worth two uh, keys, even if we're unable to get to our item room. Uh, Head of the Keeper is probably better than your average item room item, and Cricket's Head is definitely better than your average item room item. That being said, hopefully we have the opportunity to pick up, uh, to pick up more. More keys, that is. This one, I wouldn't say it's unlosable, but we're like two battery charges away from it being basically unlosable and, and the streak continuing here. And like uh, a lot of our Eden runs lately. This one didn't necessarily start out of control. We did have a streak where they were starting like really, really positively, but uh, the ones lately have not really balled on the first floor. I mean, this, admittedly, what was this one? Like the second floor? I guess I can't act like we've really done, you know, too many good things in order to swing that in our favor, but still. Let's not get cocky. We did just take a bunch of damage there. Algiz is great, though. I would love to use that to play a, uh, to play a blood bank and pick up a uh, blood bag. Anything can give us a little bit more speed and a little bit more uh, HP moving forward, because we are lacking one of those a little bit. We actually have an okay chance at a deal with the devil here, like one in four. Um, your definition of okay might vary, but it totally could have happened there, and I would have had to face a difficult decision, but instead we didn't. So, uh, disregard what I was going to say. Basically, it was going to be that we could only take deal with the devil items that actually give us HP, and even then... Do we really want to take the mark and make things uh, risky for ourselves? The answer is probably yes. I would have done it. Okay, 2020. This is also much better than your average item room item, so I'm glad that we actually managed to make it down here. This seed uh, turns out that Zed's got it going on here. This is this is really good. Uh, this is not our library. This must be our shop because it's a little further away from our spawn. 
The one that's closer to the spawn is always the library. I would prefer to go to the library. Mostly just to get those books out of the rotation, because we have a chance, I guess, at making this happen. This is actually our shop. My mistake. Um, we have a chance at, at making our libraries turn into turn into item rooms. It's going to take some seriously good libraries and maybe a lucky Perthrow rune or something like that, but um, the, the chance does exist. Moreover, if we just get, like, a Book of Sin, that basically pays for the one key required to... Um, open it. I don't mean that we're literally guaranteed to get a key. I mean, we could get a bomb, we could get a spirit art, we could get a key, we could get a golden key, etc, etc. Um, so, it, you know, if we don't know, we might as well not speculate too hard. Amnesia, after we finish the entire floor, is basically inconsequential. Let's go to our library. Inside we find two books. One is Telepathy for Dummies. One is Book of Secrets. These are not amazing choices, but they did give us a fresh black heart, so I would say that's definitely worth a key, even if it is our last key. And then we're gonna head down to the next floor, and we just keep getting stronger and stronger as floors go on. Which, to be fair, is probably how you'd like things to go in Isaac. If you're getting weaker, uh, you know, you probably, you're playing as stupidly as I am, I guess is the polite way to put it, but, uh, we should, uh, be very thankful and count ourselves extremely lucky for the position we're in right now. Now, HP-wise, we are still at, um, like maybe six or five and a half. Retrovision is largely irrelevant. Um, we can go to that curse room, and, and I will. I just want to maybe pick up one spirit heart on this floor. I can't remember how much HP we had exactly, so it's more like, well, if we gain one HP on this floor without losing any, then we can go to our curse room and know that we're still safe. Uh, it's just, it's a peace of mind thing. I think morale is important in Isaac, man. People don't give it enough credit, like in games in general. Good to stay fresh, good to keep your, uh, good to keep your wits about you, and I think if you're in a good mood, and, you, like, maybe if you're in a good mood, you're not gonna play better, but you're gonna be, like, more open to analyzing your mistakes and stuff like that, and being honest about it, and, and I think that can lead to improvement. I, I think there's, like, unseen benefits to being in a good mood when you play video games, and as an entertainer, it's good to be in a good mood when you make videos as well, at least that's what, you know... That's my perspective on things. Some people, uh, you know, they'll watch an NLSS and they, they think that I'm a negative person. I'm actually like a very positive... I'm like, I think I've done this exact same tangent in an earlier video, but I, I think of myself as like optimistically cynical. And that's like, uh, you know, maybe the world sucks and people are inherently evil, but it's still like, it's a pretty good Earth, right? Like, I know there's some fucked up shit going down and, you know, your brother, your own brother will stab you in the back for a chance at a nickel. But things are still, like, have you ever had a cheeseburger? They're goddamn delicious. I get stabbed in the back, you know, once for a cheeseburger a hundred times. Hello. You have a cheeseburger? I don't have a cheeseburger. Kate, I took damage because of your, uh, because of you bringing up the cheeseburger there. Are you, are you going to apologize? For a cheeseburger? If, you could bring me a cheeseburger if you would like as well. I'll accept an apology or one cheeseburger. All right, she said no. You think they're made out of money? Well, I, I would just like to be made out of cheeseburgers right now. But I guess Gross. you get your wish if you eat too many of them. If you're a cheeseburger, I'll be your french fry. You're going to be my french fry? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. It sounds it sounds cute, but also maybe a little little dangerous. <laughs> Which is, that's that's my fetish. Let's open up our item room here and see what we got. The onk. That's not going to be that useful for us. What are you, what are you doing in here? Tomo is full Tarzan right now. He's, he's got both of his arms out of his cat shirt? Yes. He loves it. He's wearing a tube top now. Oh, oh yeah. now Ruko wants in. Now okay. Wants now in. you've done it. <laughs> These are my cheeseburgers right here. Okay. One spirit art pays for us to come in here. Good pills? Retrovision is not a good pill. Speed down is, uh, I think you can probably guess my opinion on that. Still, floor's looking good so far. Squeezy was great. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get a deal with the devil. Uh, but that means, I mean, on the flip side, not that this is necessarily a guaranteed positive, but we're guaranteed to deal with the devil on the next floor as long as we don't take red heart damage. I'm not going to touch the arcade. I, I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to pop Algiz instead of using, like, two bombs to open this. And we got unlimited bombs out of it and a spirit heart, which sounds like a good haul, but I'm actually disappointed. And I'm disappointed because I wanted to get a key so we could get into our shop. And to be honest with you, I don't really have any need for these bombs anymore. So, a little bit of a, a waste, I, I might say. But 
Did find our second secret room. I probably wouldn't have looked were it not for those golden bombs. So I do feel a little pressure to get some benefit out of it. I'll take three one makes you larger pills just to be silly. Bad trip is not good. And retrovision again, which I'll pop just to pop. Like get it get it out of my face, right? Okay, caves two. We're headed down to uh, depths or necropolis one. Either way, I'm fine with it. We're doing so much damage. Dank depths one. Um, well, I was, I'm not fine with that. I said Necropolis or, or Depths only, mister. I'm being a little sarcastic, but uh, that that's par for the course. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm in a good mood most of the time. If you ask me on a, on a daily basis, do I think humans are innately good or evil? I think I think humans are mostly, uh, they, they try to be good. And, and a lot of conflict results from, you know, what you think is good being different than what another person thinks is good. But uh, at the same time, I am like, it is possible that, you know... Maybe we've irreparably damaged the Earth to a point that it's going to be inhospitable in a few years. But, like, have you seen they live? It's really good. It's like for every positive, there's a negative. It's like maybe we've already started the process of, you know, making the ocean temperatures rise to the point where they'll never stop heating up. And it's just like a, a horrible positive equilibrium that, that, that is just on a runaway cycle. But at the same time, you ever ridden Space Mountain? It's wonderful. We made that, man. And I guess that's, you know, I've, I've got faith in humanity, because we've... I, this is like a year ago that I first mentioned this, but I still stand by it, and it kind of blows my mind in that sort of, like, uh, you know, whoa, dude, what if colors are different for you than they are for me? Sort of way, you know? Which is to say, it's a little naive, but at the same time, it blows my mind. You know, the, the same materials, roughly, are here on Earth now, that existed when when we were like in prehistory, you know, when we were cavemen. I'm gonna go a little hard on this, kind of dangerously, but I, I like the idea of it here. And what what I mean by that is like the same elements and configurations of those elements to some extent were used to basically make like cavemen era stone tools. Oh, growth hormones is so good. As were used to like launch rockets and satellites into space, you know, like put a man on the moon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is what gives me faith in the future of mankind, is that we took a bunch of fucking stupid rocks and, you know, elements, and turned it into a rocket ship that can send people into the fucking space. It's like Minecraft, you know, you spawn into like a Minecraft world, and you're like, I know how to make a bow and arrow. What happens next? And you're like, well, somebody made a working uh, video caller in this. And you're like, oh shit. Human brain, you scary. It is scary, but it's scary in what I hope is a good, in a good way, you know? Sometimes it's used for, for evil, sometimes it's used for good, and sometimes it's used for a little bit of both. Jesus Juice is really good. Well, anything that stacks up damage for us is going to be really good, even if by itself it's not really good. We've got kind of like a additive benefits, I think, happening here. And, you know, we used our, uh, we used our Empress card, but we got a Devil card back for it, which is also totally fine. I... Don't really care about boss rush on this run, which I'm sure is refreshing for a lot of people to hear, even if you don't believe it. Um, I'm going to focus on making sure we get to our item room and uh, also our shop, because we have the resources necessary for both. I think we'll probably still make it to boss rush, though. Like, I'd be very surprised if we didn't. So we got uh, Undefined in our item room. People are going to be like, take Undefined! As far as I'm concerned, the most the most vitriol I can muster for, for Nicholas, the company that made this, uh, and this is not vitriolic at all, which is the point, uh, is that I think that they basically ruined Undefined by taking out chest looping. That's fine. You know, people make mistakes, and I think that is as close to an objective mistake as they've made in development. There's a lot of subjective mistakes that people have problems with, but uh, Undefined, as far as I'm concerned, is basically like a D or C rank teleport-based spacebar item now. Uh, now that they've taken looping out. It used to be like an automatic take because it was absurd and could also grant you like infinite items on the chest. It didn't really make it overpowered though because if you were getting infinite, if you were taking undefined and looping on the chest, you were already strong enough to loop. Of course in the end it made it so that, you know, you were, it was impossible for you to die because you just picked up so many good items. But, you know, you had already functionally won the run just by virtue of implicitly taking the item is what I'm getting at. Um... I do think that that was a mistake, and I, I think that that is, is, it doesn't ruin the game by any stretch of the imagination, but it, like, incrementally decreases the amount of fun you can have with it, which I thought was a, a strange design decision, but maybe it's a side effect of, of something else. Maybe it's like, you know, oh my god, you want to come in? 
Domo, what's going on, buddy? He's, uh, you're crying for me. Hey, come here, buddy. Come here. What's the problem? What's the problem? You got your arm all wedged in this cat shirt, man. There you go. Maybe that's why he's meowing. We got them, uh... We got them wearing cat shirts because we're, we're terrible pet owners, but also because they're they're shedding like crazy. So we put the shirt on him for like 12 hours, take the shirt off and brush him, put the shirt back on him, trying to control a little bit of the cat fur because Kate's allergies are acting up like crazy. But Tomo keeps uh, sneaking his arm out of the sleeve and then walking around with uh, with one arm. It makes me feel like a, like a terrible person here. I just stop taking your arm out, you dingo. It's a shirt. You think I can't take my arms out of my own sleeves? You see us wear them on a daily basis, we just kind of deal with it. I guess that's not fair, it's a different, uh... It's a different world, different cognitive capabilities. Seriously though, you gotta... <laughs> jumping around here. Gotta slow your roll a little bit. Question marks. The Parasite. That's beautiful. We've gotten really, really lucky with our payouts on this one. Uh, and the shop is right here, and honestly, this looks like a really well-architectured floor from the perspective of just trying to finish it. Uh, not really as quickly as possible, but like, in time to get to boss rush as well. Which I didn't really care about, but at the same time, if everything's on the way to the boss fight, why not, man? Broken Watch is not my favorite uh, shop item, but it's okay for a question mark pickup. Guess we should use that. I'm assuming this is the way that we go. I don't know for sure, but, you know, it's a pretty long dead end if it is a dead end. Should have taken the battery, but whatever. Um, so we have no teleport card. I would require a pretty good boss rush item to go for it, and I just realized that we can't see our boss rush item, so I'm actually just gonna leave. If you wanna see boss rush, go check out a daily. Because on today's episode, I'm skipping it. I don't care about our question marks. That being said, I will take every deal with the devil that we can get. I just don't wanna go... Subject myself to like eight minutes of boss rush to pick up like mom's heels mom's heels is like my go-to I don't give a shit about this item item Has like no meaningful positive or negative impact on our run in most situations But what about the mom transformation? Okay, admittedly uh, If you have the mom transformation Or if you're gonna get the mom transformation as a result and you also have some form of invincibility that allows you to use the knife that is, you know, set behind you. I think maybe there's some merit to, to mom's heels, but uh, that that's a pretty unlikely situation. I'm not going to say it's never happened. It has happened. There are dozens of us. Should pick up these keys, but apart from that, I don't, I don't want to say we're running out the clock on this run, but it's basically become strong enough that... Uh, there's, there's very little risk of death, especially considering that we have... Ugh! Especially considering that we have, uh, not only Satanic Bible, uh, but also the Ankh. So, I would be, I would be surprised to see a miserable failure happen here. The other thing is... I'd rather do Hush, honestly, than do... Boss Rush, as long as we know what items are down there, but I guess we wouldn't know until we actually got down there. We'll, we'll see how the run looks when we go down. Because if we can fight Hush, we got a great chance of living. Um, it's not going to be that bad, you know, time-wise. Maybe we'll do it. But I also don't want it to take all of our keys before we get to the chest. Because the last daily uh, was not a chest run. So I didn't get to open any items. It made me feel bad about myself. It uh, made jokes about my mother. And uh, I don't want to give it the satisfaction, quite frankly. It feels like a second secret room. It is a second secret room. It is not a guppy item. So we got like a 25% chance of a deal with the devil here, I think. And that is about what you would expect one quarter of the time it would look like. Or th sorry, three quarters of the time it would look like when you have a 25% chance to get to the deal with the devil there. Almost made a, an egregious probabilistic error there. There we go. There we go. I mean, I, at this point, we could be taking Satanic Bible charges and, and using them to try to, like, fill out all of our hearts with black hearts, but that's the kind of thing where we're, we're getting into some min-maxing that is purely theoretical. And, you know, there, there's a place for for theoretical, or, or theory crafting, I should say, but if it's never impacted me on a run, to the best of my knowledge, then I'm, I'm a little less likely to actually care about it. 
we'll leave that up to the theoretical physicists of, of Isaac to, to talk over whether or not this is a, a silly decision or not a silly decision. I'm just going to say at this point we don't care about books because we're, uh, we're not going to get the opportunity to really use them now. Book of, or to, to really use the fact that we have the precedent to get more libraries, I guess, because we're so close to the end. Uh, I will say Book of Shadows might be an advisable choice, but I don't think it is. If we had, you know, Midas Touch or something, absolutely. Without Midas Touch, I think we're probably better off just ignoring it. Seven keys is exactly what you need on the Hush fight to... In order to uh, open everything. So now that we have nine keys. Sounds like a Pokemon that's like based on a piano. Casio keyboard or something. Now that we have nine keys, I think we can do it and beat Hush and then still be able to uh, open everything on the chest probably. Deal with the Devil contains Guppy's paw. Uh, we'll, we'll take it just to up our Guppy chances and improve permanent Polaroid invincibility. Let's go down. I'll tell you what. There we go. All black cards. We'll fight Hush. We've got a Devil card. we got enough keys to open everything up. It could amp up our synergies. It could be fun. Curse of the Blind. Like I said, I'll go down here as long as there's no question marks. <laughs> it's all going to be question marks. Uh, top one. Glass Cannon. Not great. We're not going to be taking that. Glass Cannon is just, it's too risky even for me. Multidimensional Baby is fine. Glowing Hourglass. Not interested. Diplopia. Diplopia. I mean, Diplopia would have been sweet. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for, but I guess the battery charge doesn't do much for us. This is Algiz. I guess we should take this other one in with us. I guess we'll take Diplopia down to the chest. And, we'll, yeah, we'll take the Devil into this. We'd rather have the Devil than Algiz. So our damage should be really, really good. Especially if we can get multi-dimensional baby working consistently. Um, but... The chest is... Or, sorry, the uh, blue womb has been kind of a... A wash for us, I'd say, so far. I guess the other thing is one long fight allows us to get a pretty good opportunity to uh, to get a lot of luck upgrade pills or uh, pennies as a result of uh, Head of the Keeper, which is really good for us as we can uh, hopefully uh, generate way more chests on the chest as a result of that. And we don't need to worry about keys too much because as a result of uh, as a result of not having Guppy's tail, we should just be able to open all those vanilla chests just fine. So I'm trying to just, you know, reset multi-dimensional baby on the regular so that we can actually take advantage of it. We are going to take some damage here. I think that's pretty much unavoidable. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a good thing, but I don't think it's a it's a catastrophically bad thing. Just keep multi-dimensional baby running in and out here. Generating as many shots as possible. It does affect our ability to dodge, but uh, at this point... Basically, outside of this fight, I am unconcerned about our, you know, fitness for actually winning this run. This run should be a relatively easy win. Can we move back and forth on this axis uh, without much risk? I think so. Uh, not on this one, though. Seems safe here. Okay, now we can move back and forth on this axis. Why is that important? Um, I just want to make sure that there are periods in which multidimensional baby is actually in front of us so we get that damage bonus. It's actually working out really well. I think. I mean, it could work out really well if, even if I didn't do this uh, strategy. Maybe the strategy is really stupid and it's actually costing us DPS. But it looks like it's working and uh, at this point that's really all that matters to me because if it looks like it's working, it's working. It's working well enough for us to beat the run, which is really all I'm concerned about at least. I don't need all this money, just give me like one luck upgrade. We already had one, but give me like one more. Apparently not, that's too much to ask. Okay, Cathedral time. Now we're gonna see what our damage really looks like uh, against enemies who are not ridiculously tanky. And I gotta admit, I'm looking and I'm liking here. What do you do with Diplopia? I guess you pop the items on the chest. What The one thing I always forget about Diplopia is that if you take an item but leave the pedestal, then Diplopia gives you a new item on that pedestal. So, it's it's a little bit like a, an augmented Yara rune. I was going to say enhanced, but I don't really mean it in that in that way. Hoping for an Emperor card or something. Um, 
So we're gonna pop it. If items would be awesome stacked on top of one another, in theory, because I don't know in practice uh, which items actually do and which don't. If they'd be awesome in theory stacked on top of one another, Curved Horn is amazing, then we'll take two of them. Otherwise, we'll take one, and then we'll Diplopia. I uh, probably shouldn't have taken this. We'll take one, then we'll Diplopia, and it'll reroll the pedestal into something better, hopefully. But maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It doesn't really matter in the long run. I mean, we're we're doing really really well. This run is pretty much done. Uh, if I had to, if I was a betting man, I'd say that probably by 32 minutes we'll be out of here. Six minutes left, roughly, to meet, to meet that time limit. Uh, obviously, that drops down to like you know 29 minutes if we can just get one emperor card or something. Not that I'm trying to necessarily speed it up or anything like that. Never you worry. I mean, if we were trying to speed it up, we just wouldn't have done the hush fight, and that would have been... That would have been that. That hush fight, you know, I think it gave me some worthwhile intel on how strong we actually are, and the answer is pretty strong. As long as we get one more key, it also gave us, uh... It also gave us, uh... Multi-dimensional baby, which is fine. I say we need one more key, just because we're only going to be able to open three chests on the chest. Uh, maybe, I'll tell you what, we'll go through the chest until we get, uh... One more key. Because I really want to make sure I'm actually using Diplopia properly, but uh, the risk in trying to make sure that you're using something 100% properly is that you might not be able to ever use it. Maybe it'll just uh, never work properly for you. You'll never find that perfect world scenario, but... I think I did leave a chest behind, too, but it, it is it is what it is. Okay, ignore these for now. There's no huge need to Diplopia right away at the loss of potentially two items. I'm worried that, like, if you pick up an, a, a spacebar item... Or any item for that matter, and then leave the room, the pedestal will be gone. Which is why I want to, uh. I want to make sure that I don't reset any pedestal, so I want to have all four keys before I go in there. And it only took us two extra rooms. Lots of big rooms up here. That makes me think this is probably where we're going. So, first we pop these. Um. Okay. I, we take this. <laughs> And leave the pedestal. And we take this. But we can't really take that and leave the pedestal. So I guess we'll just get our card. And then blow this up. Okay. Weird. And then we'll double the other two? You know what? We don't need Blue Baby's Only Friend. Let's let's turn that into a, a Blue Baby's Only Friend and a D6. And then we definitely don't need two Spider Bites. And out of that, we got Little Chest and Peeper's Eye. Uh, you may disagree with how that went down. It might have been more fun to have two blue babies only friends. And then we'd, uh, take one spider bite and reroll it into something else, but... Looks like our reroll pool was kind of, kind of fucked up there anyway, so... You know, we got the D12 and Peeper's Eye. How exciting. Two chests. Sad Bombs is lovely. Scorpio is pretty great. Well, it's pretty good, at least. And pretty much no enemy is going to be able to stand up to us at this point. Parasite, Scorpio, Sad Bombs. Uh, it, it's a tall order. Actually, in a way, I feel bad for the enemies that we're going to be facing at this point. Because we're pretty much... Uh, we're not at the point where we're one-shotting bosses, but we're definitely like one-bombing bosses. There's like a Joker card back there, maybe. That all... Oh, that did hit us! I was going to say that almost hit us. No, it did hit us. We're going to have 34 bombs, and you know what? We're actually going to be done in 30 minutes flat, it seems like. Uh, probably in our best interest to not just run into enemies immediately. That was my bad. And this was a really nice run that takes us to 15. Streak's still going. Haven't really lost uh, outside of a daily since we've come back, which is nice. Thanks for watching. Oh, that did damage? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.